All right, not to make anybody feel guilty, but my wife is still at the hospital. I've got my kid over here, Libby. She's playing with some rulers because she's going to be a math nerd just like her dad. Um, but I hear that you guys need some help with section 6-5 uh, of Algebra 2. So with that, I want to work out one of the examples. Uh, first of all, example one, check for understanding. Uh, I want to do that question. Um, we're going to take it to the next step to do example two. I'm going to carry that thought to address uh, example three and then I'll plant the idea in your head for example four even though I'm not going to actually do an example three and an example four so um, Libby's here she wants to say hi ha this is Elizabeth say hi she's got her pacifier she's not usually a pacifier kid but say hi say hi what noise does a cow make moo. the cow says moo what noise does a horsey make moo. that's right you know horsey sounds do you know where your nose is that's right. Do you know where your hair is? Do you have daddy's hair? Yeah, that's daddy's hair. Where are your ears? Where are your ears? Those are daddy's ears. Where are your ears? Okay, you run and play. Daddy's gonna do some math. Uh, okay, so our first example, you're gonna watch me do math honey bunch? We've got x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 8 equals 0. The question phrased here is, what are um, the possible rational roots? Okay, we care about rational roots because they're easy to find on the graph. Um, they're easy to do uh, synthetic or long division when we have rational roots. We care about rational numbers because we can express them in rational terms, all right? We like those better than irrational answers. Those are your imperfect like square roots. Um, and they're better than imaginary numbers because you really can't visualize those on the graph. So. Um, the way that we approach this is we look at the constant and we look at the lead coefficient here, which in this case is a 1. We take factors of the constant and we divide them all by factors of the uh, lead coefficient, so in this case 1. Well, all the numbers that multiply to give us 8, all right, so I'm going to list all of these things, are going to be plus or minus 1 times plus or minus 8. I've got plus or minus 2 times plus or minus 4, and there are no other factors of 8. Now, I have the negatives here, too, because we do have to consider those. We've got to address those as well. Factors of 1, only positive and negative 1. So that's easy. Whenever you see a is equal to 1, you're in the clear. Things are going to be good. Because check this out. If I'm going to take positive 1 and divide it by 1, I'm going to get 1. If I take positive 1 divided by negative 1, I'm going to get negative 1. If I take negative 1 divided by 1, I'm going to get negative 1. I already have that. Negative 1 divided by negative 1, I'm going to get positive 1. So I've already accounted for all those. Libby, you should get off the desk, please. Um, so really, in this particular situation, when this is 1, we just have to consider the numerators. If you need more explanation on that, then you might be in the wrong class. But I don't want to make you feel bad, so we'll just, we'll just, let's, uh, you can see me during seminar. Although I'm not going to be here in seminar all week, so, uh, shoot me a message on Schoology and maybe I'll make you a special video. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to check each one of these numbers to see if they are rational roots. So um, this ends up being what is, um, what happens when I plug 1 into this equation? I get, uh, or into the expression here on the left, do I get 0? 1 cubed minus 4 times 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 8. What does that equal? What about negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 8? What about uh, positive 2 squared, uh, I'm sorry, this is cubed, minus 4 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 8, da 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 da. All right, so we want to see what all of those are. We want to see what each of those equal. When I plug those numbers in um, into these expression, this expression here, I'm going to get the output of uh, 3 for this. I'm going to get an output of negative 9 for that. Um, I'm sorry, negative 4 I think it was supposed to be. I've got terrible handwriting. Uh, I'm sorry, negative 1 was 5. Um, when I plug in 2, I get out negative 4. When I... Whoo, she hit the camera. When I plug in all of those things, I've got to put in negative 2, I've got a cubed, blah, 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 blah. I've got to put in positive 4, blah, blah, blah. I've got to put in negative 4. When I put in positive 4, my output is 0. This is what we care about. If this um, f of 4 is equal to 0, then that means that it gives us a 0. It gives us a root. It's a rational root. 
All right, so this is four is a rational number. So that means that there is a factor of x minus four. All right, so um, the way that example one is approach, uh, approaches this concept is what are the rational roots? Test each one of those, um, those fractions and see when you plug each of those numbers in to the expression here on the left, do you get an output of zero? Now let me tell you the secret, secret shortcut to this already amazingly long video. You're going to be fine, honey bunch. I'm not a neglectful father. She's just playing with a chair. Um, when, uh, if you use your graph or calculator, if I can find mine. If you use your graph or calculator, I don't know how well this is going to show up on the screen. If you plug the function into your graph or calculator and then go to the table, you can see what comes out when I put in x equals 8. Or what happens when you put in x equals 4, that's 0. When I put in x equals 2, that's negative 4. 1, that's 3. Negative 1, that's 5. Uh, negative 2, that's negative, I can't, I can't read it backwards. This shows up backwards on my, my screen here. Um, negative 12. Negative 4 gives me negative 112. Negative 8 gives me something ridiculous. Negative 744. All right, so um, you can use your graph or calculator to plug in the function y equals um, that polynomial on the left, and you want to see where the output is zero. All right? So use your graph or calculator to take that shortcut. Your job is to just figure out what these fractions are. So we have plus or minus one, we've got plus or minus two, plus or minus four, and plus or minus eight on this particular example. So you plug in those eight numbers, each of the positive versions and each of the negative versions. Now here's the kick for this. We know from this example, that we just did, that 4 is a root, all right? So 4 works. Yay, 4 is a rational root. That means that, the, that uh, x minus 4 is a factor of this expression, x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 8. So we can take that, and we can use synthetic division because it saves time and space. Am I right? Am I right? And we can multiply these to find out uh, what the uh, result is when we divide this expression by x minus 4. All right? When we do that, we get x squared minus 2. All right? x squared 0, x is negative 2. So that means that this can be rewritten as x minus 4 times x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. We can now solve this. Now we know that when we solve this, we're not going to get a rational number because we just exhausted all the rational options. That's what's awesome about this. You don't have to sit there and sit and guess and figure out, well, how do I factor this? I can't factor that. I can't factor that either. But what I can do is, is uh, break down each of uh, the factors of the constant, the factors of the lead coefficient, and I can plug in each of those numbers into that expression, find out what factors work, all right, and I can use that to uh, divide uh, this expression to figure out what my other factor is. Now watch this, x minus 4 equals 0, that's going to give me the answer x equals 4. So that's one of my solutions, x equals 4. For the other one, however, x minus 2 equals 0, I'm, I'm sorry, x squared minus 2, I'm going to erase this, x squared minus 2 equals 0, I'm going to get an irrational answer here, x equals positive negative square root of 2. So I have a rational root and I have an irrational root. You've seen this a lot on, on most of the um, exercises that you had to do in section uh, 6.4. All right, that was a hard assignment, by the way. Good job doing all of those. Um, so, uh, so, so here we explore the factors of the constant and the factors of the lead coefficient to figure out what rational roots actually exist. We use that rational root to divide to figure out what else is left over. Hey, this is a quadratic. I can solve this in, in probably a number of ways. Um, this one, it looks like the best approach is to solve by taking square roots. Notice how our answer is irrational. Example three breaks, uh, 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 poses the question. Example three, so I'm moving on. I did example one, this was example two. Uh, example three says, um, if, if the square root of two is a zero, then so is its opposite, the opposite of the square root of 2. All right, and that will be true for all, um, all rational roots. Okay, so if we say, well, um, I did some math magic, and I found out that 1 plus the square root of 3 um, is, uh, is, is a root, all right, is, is, is a 0. 
Um, and it's, I'm sorry, I said opposite. That's wrong. They use the word conjugate. That's a vocabulary term that you need to understand. All right, sorry, honey bunch. I know we're almost done. We'll go see mommy in a little bit. All right, mommy's at the hospital. What's daddy doing? He's doing math. The conjugate is also a solution. So positive one, square root of three, but it's not plus square root of three, it's minus. If this is a zero, then that is a zero. If this is a zero, then that is a zero. If I say it's two minus the square root of three is a zero, then two plus the square root of three is a zero. If I say negative two plus the square root of three is a zero, then negative two minus the square root of three is also a zero. It's magic, it's awesome. Check it out, believe it, and then test it, and you'll find out that it actually works. It's glorious, it's glorious. Um, the extension of that example three and that, that theorem of, uh, it's called the irrational root theorem, is the imaginary root theorem. This gives it to example four and example five. Sorry, honey bunch, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. That last part says, hey, if we know that negative two plus i is a zero, then that tells us that negative two minus i is also a zero. You look at the complex conjugate, you switch the sign, you keep the same number of i's. If I say eight plus two i is a zero, then I can say that eight minus two i is also a zero. That is what section six five is. All right. If you have more questions, please shoot me a message on Schoology. I'm not going to be here on Thursday. I plan to be back by Friday, but it depends on doctor orders and, and if this girl is going to keep crying. All right. Sorry that took so long. I hope you found that very enlightening. Um, message me with questions. Peace.